Well, hello there, health coaches. It's so nice to be here with you. Just this last weekend, I was in New York City. We went into Rockefeller Center to see the tree and to see the lights at Saks Fifth Avenue or any of you in the area and doing the same thing. I bet there were at least a handful of health coaches in the crowd, just statistically speaking, because it was an enormous crowd. <laughs> I mean, I've done it before and it's always the same thing where there's just a jabillion people in the streets and you're kind of packed in like sardines getting moved with the crowd, but it's so exciting. And I like being there. I like the energy. My boyfriend, on the other hand, he was not very happy about it because you know, a lot of people were kind of freaking out because of the, the mob. Fair, fair. But you know how I saw it? I was like, oh my gosh, we're in a crowd of people. We're, we're, we're together again, you know, after years where that kind of thing just wasn't happening because of COVID. So the good news as we are moving into 2024 is that being together is back, baby. People are going at it full force. And I, for one, am very happy about that. Now, the, the bad news, the maybe not as awesome news is that you may not be so sure about how to connect with your local community. So today's episode is in response to Sarah's question inside our Health Coach Power Community Facebook group. Sarah said, does anyone have any ideas to engage their surrounding community more, like set up some sort of meet and greet or discussion or party? She said, I live in a rural area and I'm stuck idea-wise. Sarah, I got you. This episode is for you and for everybody else to connect more within the local community because it is so valuable, so valuable as you build your business. But before we dive in, this episode is brought to you by Practice Better, which is my very favorite practice management software. Many, many coaches in our community are using it and love it because Practice Better handles all your billing, all your scheduling, so much more just streamlines your entire practice. And for a limited time, you can get a bonus kitchen cleanout program. It's built right into the Practice Better platform so you can start using it with your clients right away. Plus, you'll get 30% off your first three months when you go to healthcoachpower.com slash PB to get started. And all the details are in the show notes. Now, the most important thing to think about when you're like, all right, I want to connect more in my community. It sounds like a good thing to do. You're going to want to reach out to those within your community that you really want to find, right? Cause there's lots of different people inside your community. All they're not all necessarily your ideal client, figure out who the right ones are and then where they already go. Where are they already? Like in my practice, as a health coach, I worked with 40 something corporate women, and I would be able to find them pretty consistently at higher end yoga studios, higher end gyms. You know, I wasn't really going to find her at the community center so much or like the library. So it wouldn't have helped too much to go to those places or maybe like the senior center. Cause like those just weren't the types of people that I was looking for. So my point is Take the ideas that I'm about to share, use them if they make sense for you and for your intended you know, target market or the, the type of clients that you want, or just modify these ideas however you need to, to make sure that you are reaching the right people. But today, what I want to do is just like grease the wheels of creativity and get you going in the right direction with 10 different ways to connect to your local community as a health coach. Now, if you are here live, and I can see that some of you are, please ask questions as we go along, put your comments over here. I have my eye on those. I'd love to hear, have you done anything in your community so far? Let me know about it. And I'll give you some examples of what I've done personally as we go through these. So are we ready? Idea number one. This seems like the most obvious, so I had to make it number one. Hold a workshop, hold a workshop at a gym, at a Pilates studio, at the yoga studio, anywhere that they routinely offer workshops. They're gonna be very open to this idea. They already have a process for it. They already know how to get their audience to come to the workshops at their establishment. And all you have to do is show up and provide great content. They're gonna be thrilled 
thrilled, first of all, that you're doing it and they don't have to, <laughs> they're able to provide value to their audience without the owner of the place actually running the workshop. That's a great thing. There will often be a split in terms of the money that is generated. So if uh, the yoga studio usually charges like $30 a head, they'll split it with you. Sometimes it's a 70, 30 split or a 60, 40 split where you get the larger amount and they keep the rest fair. We're not doing this so much for the money. We're doing it to meet people. So if you're paid a little bit on the side too, great. Hey, extra bonus. We love that. So find a place where workshops are held get to know the owner and pitch a workshop. You can be doing these throughout the entire year, but you want to start now because it usually takes a few months. And this is true for a lot of the ideas I'll share today. It usually takes some time to coordinate these things. Of course, I guarantee you a yoga studio already has the first quarter or the first half of the year already set with workshops. So if you started today, you might be able to get something in for like halfway through next year. So start today. All right. Has anybody already held a workshop? Just tell me in the comments if this is something you've done. We would love to hear about it. When I was in my earliest years of private practice, I had a sugar smackdown workshop that I took all over the place. I held them at yoga studios, I held them at gyms, held them even at like the natural food store. And it was always a big hit. So think about a topic that appeals to like perhaps a slightly wider audience than who you're trying to find. Because if you go in with like, you know, a very specific, like I have a workshop about Lyme disease. That's great, but very small percentage of like the yoga studio is dealing with Lyme disease. Go on with something just slightly wider. That's why I like the sugar topic because it applies to like a, it applied to a lot of women. And then within that group, I usually found like my perfect clients. And whenever I hold a workshop, I remember signing at least one client right away because you're meeting people in person. You can do workshops online, but I love the in-person workshop. I think it is your fastest path to signing paying clients. Kathy says, what length of time seems ideal? Uh, an hour is pretty typical, but it can be any format. I'm thinking of Sarah, who's one of our HPU members, and she just did a three-part menopause series. So a different topic, uh, one per week, and I'm not sure how long they were, but you know, that's a different format. It was like a series. So you could do something like that. Um, and I like to do workshops where I'm really engaging with people. So yes, you can host something. And we'll talk about this in just a second. That's a little more corporate, you know, where you have like your PowerPoint presentation up on a screen of some kind, but I really prefer these to be more warm and cozy and uh, more tactile. You know, I always like to have some activity where we're looking at something, we're touching something, we're reading something together, we're talking to each other. Um, so anyway, can you tell I'm a really big fan of workshops? Get them on the calendar now, you guys. There's plenty of time that, uh, left in 2024's calendar, I'm sure, at any establishment you choose. Okay, second idea, like I said, a little more corporate. So in any community, there are businesses of some kind. Now it doesn't have to be like a big corporate setting. You don't have to be walking into a skyscraper to do some type of event, some type of lunch and learn for a local business. Think about, I mean, yes, of course, think about the big businesses near you, the big companies, the fortune 500s, maybe you live in a city good for you, but even if you don't, what about the local insurance agent? They've got an office somewhere or the restaurant staff in the local, whatever restaurant, you know, before the restaurant opens for the day, they usually don't open until the evening. Maybe you come in, in that hour or two beforehand and do some type of lunch and learn uh, for the staff there. So when we think corporate, we often think big corporate. I want you to also think small corporate, other small businesses um, and anything in that spectrum you can present. It could be the same type of workshop. I could go into any setting and I did. I went into, I used to live in Boston. So I used to um, do a couple of corporate workshops around there and I would bring that same sugar smack down to the corporate setting. So depending what it is, you couldn't get away with having like just one or maybe two workshops that you have to offer and shop it around all over the place. So anywhere you live, there's gonna be some kind of business that has some kind of employees. 
tap into that. Okay. Here's something that another one of our HPU members did recently because she felt really stuck and, you know, she was having trouble with the online marketing and, uh, you know, it was just like, felt like a slog. And if your business feels like a slog, you're going to bring that kind of energy to it and nobody's going to want to hire you. <laughs> so you got to do things that feel fun, enjoyable, something you actually want to do. Yes. So how about this idea? If you're like Karen, who I was talking about just a second ago, start a walking group. You can do this pretty much in any area of the country, more or less any time of year. I mean, get, get bundled up if you're in the Northeast, get out there walking with your neighbors. This is something that you can start just within your little neighborhood, or you can advertise to like your whole town or your whole, whole municipality on like your you know, we have a Facebook group for our town. In fact, we have about five different Facebook groups for our town. It's the kind of thing that you could advertise there. It doesn't read as advertising. If you're just like, Hey, starting a walking group, this is the route we're going to do. We're going to do it every Tuesday. Who wants to join? That's going to be allowed in any group. You could also, if you wanted, you could hang flyers. You could just spread through word of mouth and get people involved with your walking group. Why? Because just like a workshop, a walking group allows you to talk to people, to get to know people in person. People are starved for this kind of interaction. So if you're walking, you're going to talk about, you know, whatever naturally comes up. You're not there to pitch yourself per se, but you're going to make friends with everybody in the group. They're going to ask you what you do, or you're going to ask them what they do. And then they're going to ask you what you do. You're just going to have a human conversation. And along the way, you're going to talk about your work as a health coach. They're going to start understanding why you're the perfect person to lead a walking group and why you're the perfect person to ask about their pre-diabetes diagnosis or their other thing that their doctor just told them, or the fact that they've been trying to lose the same 10 pounds over and over again for the past 10 years, right? You're just going to become the go-to in your community. A walking group requires nothing in the way of technology, very little in the way of preparation. Like I said, you could pretty much do this year round especially if you're in San Diego or some really nice part of the country <laughs> or the world, <laughs> but see how that might fit in to, uh, to where you live. Okay. What else is going on locally? I mean, we all know you can market yourself online. We talk plenty about social media, et cetera, et cetera. But what about just out your front door? Like in every area you go somewhere to buy food, right? <laughs> you, uh, you, you're going to have a, a conventional grocery store. You're going to have maybe a natural food store. Maybe you have a farmer's market, whatever it is. Do a grocery store tour at any of these places or a farmer's market tour. Just connect with the manager at the place. Ask them if it's okay. Maybe they'll help you advertise. If you're going into like a natural food store, they tend to offer programming like this, or they want to offer programming like this. If you go into like a conventional grocery store, basically you're just saying like, is it okay if I do this? <laughs> just get, get their blessing um, so that they're not coming up to you halfway through and saying, Hey, who are you? What are you doing? And then you'll assemble a group or they will help you assemble a group for people who want to learn to fill in the blank, you know, uh, feed themselves well to, lose weight or save money while eating real whole foods or whatever angle you want to take on it. Um, or it could just be like a get to know you natural food store, because a lot of places, a lot of people, when they go into a store like that, they're like, oh my God, what is this? Where do I find the Doritos? You know, and they, they, they're a little bit weird about the bulk section at a farmer's market. If you have a nice farmer's market in your area, same thing. People who don't normally shop at a farmer's market don't know how. So you can actually just take them from table to table, introduce them to the farmers, introduce them to the different vendors. Um, it can be a really lovely way, again, to talk to people, to get to know people, to position yourself as the expert without, you don't even have to say, I'm the expert. You just are the expert because you're the one running the thing. If they have any questions about food, about reading labels, whatever, it's going to come up during that tour. 
And you're going to be the obvious person to ask. As you can tell, this is going to be a natural segue into working with these people as clients. So I love the idea. Grocery store tour is something that health coaches have been doing for decades and has nothing to do with social media, has nothing to do with technology. Go set up a tour. It's going to be good. I promise. Again, with any of these, helpful if you can collect email addresses. Don't don't not do it because you can't figure that out. <laughs> Just do it anyway. Just meet people, be a human being, talking to other human beings. That will take you further in your health coaching business than anything else you can do. Okay, what else is in your local area? How about a library? You got a library? How about a church? Even if you don't go to church, I'm sure there is a church. Even better if you are a parishioner. Start a group at these places where everyone in the community is already going. That's the point, right? So everyone's already going to the library. I have to pick up my son in just two hours from our local library. Start a healthy book reading club or something like that at the library. People already go there. They already expect to read. The books are already there. <laughs> it just makes too much sense, right? That would be a really great way to meet people and be talking about various health-related topics or food-related topics or whatever it is that you want to pick the books about. If you were going to connect with your church, you know, you I mean, you could do anything. You can hold a workshop there, but maybe you do like a Bible study group that again is all focused on living a healthy life. You know, pick parts of the Bible that relate to that. Steer the conversation gently towards health and wellness. You don't have to do anything else. You don't need a PowerPoint. You don't need to be a doctor. You're just the person who's organizing this. So everyone's going to naturally start asking you questions. And that's where you get to shine. And that's where you get to invite them to have a chat right? Like, oh, this is, we should talk more about this. Oh, wow. You heard that from your doctor. Oh, wow. You're dealing with this. I'd love to talk to you more here. Give me a call. Here's my email address. Let me email you. We'll set up a time to chat. That's your path to clients. Got it. All right. If we like any of these ideas so far, say yes in the comments, just so I know that this thing is on, you're listening and it's making sense. These are simple, simple ways of marketing yourself. And I'm going to say you can, you can use all of them. You can take one of these ideas and run with them, or you can use all of them in 2024. All right. That was five. Aaron says yes over here. Okay. Somebody's listening. That's good. Oh, Diana's here too. Good. <laughs> these all sound like stuff that you guys can pull off, right? It's not that complicated. Kathy says, I like the grocery store tour to teach folks to read labels and know what to avoid. Oh my God. Yes, absolutely. People are very confused about Hang a couple flyers at the grocery store, you know, tell your email list about it or your local community about it. Doing grocery store tour, you got five people show up, 10 people show up. That's a lot of people to walk around the grocery store, right? But each one of them, they're going to remember you. You know, you're going to see them later at the soccer game and you're going to wave. And that is the beauty of doing something in community because you're going to continue seeing this, these people, whether they're on your email list or not right? And you're going to continue to have something to talk to them about because they're going to come up to you and be like, hey, I know you did that grocery store tour like six months ago. I've been meaning to ask you, you know, do you know anything about thyroid health? Because I just got told that I have this thing going on with my thyroid. And then you could say, I'd love to talk to you about that. All right, let's move on. Here's another idea. We'll get away from events for just a second. In every local area, your town, your whatever, your county, there are local papers. Yes. Newsprint is still available. I know I get something, I think it's called like the river town news or something like that. Cause I live in a river town. So all the river towns, there's this one publication that gets printed up and it just appears in my mailbox, like once a month or whatever it is. I'm sure you have something like that too. Guess what? These publications need content. And it's actually easier than you think to figure out who the publisher is, write to them, ask if you can contribute a column to the paper. 
you're going to write about some health related topic, maybe something that's both health related and local, right? You can find various topics that are um, not just about health and wellness, but relate to the people in your area. That would be even better. And they're going to say, awesome. <laughs> and they're going to print your byline and maybe you can get them to put your email address or a URL in the byline. That goes a very long way towards establishing yourself in a community. Plus now you've been published, you know, and there's a lot of confidence in that. All of these uh, local print publications will also have an online version in almost every case. And then there's probably also strictly online publications that you can write for. So writing a column can work beautifully. Of course, you can write for publications that are not in your local area. I've written articles for all kinds of websites, but if you're starting out, you might think, who am I? Why would they want me to write for them? And that might hate you. I hate for you to talk yourself down like that, but in the grand scheme of things in the whole world, why would they choose you? Okay, fine. I'll give you that. Maybe that has some merit, especially if you're just starting as a health coach, but in your local area, they will choose you because you live there. And that makes you special. And that makes you part of exactly what they're trying to do with their publication is reach the people that live there, right? They're doing the same thing as you. They're trying to connect the community. Okay. How about your local schools? Everybody's got schools, right? So that means you can get into those schools and do a workshop with the kids. That's one angle. Like, could you teach kids to make a healthy snack? Can you go in and help kids do something to make their classroom more healthy or whatever, right? You find like one teacher or one administrator at the school who cares about the kid's health. You've got to, you've got to weigh in. The other angle you could take is to do something like through the PTA more for the parents. So if you were to hold some kind of like pack a healthy lunch workshop, you know, that would be aimed at getting the parents there. I know in my town, my kids are in the school district and they constantly have both types of activities going on. Parents going into the classroom to share what they know and what they love. And also the PTA is always doing various events. Ellen is saying over here, the Pine Barrens Tribune, it's the, so about the idea of getting, um, getting a column in the local paper, Ellen's talking about the Pine Barrens Tribune. That sounds like New Jersey. She said the hickiest paper ever, but I actually read it for how Hallmark it is. And now that I think about it, most of the people are my demographic. Yeah. I mean, if you open it and flip through it, other people are doing the same thing. You know, maybe they even put your picture in there next to your byline. You'd be surprised. People will stop you and say, hey, don't you write that column in the paper? Now you're famous. <laughs> well, you're locally famous anyway. And Kathy was asking a question earlier about, about the workshops and the grocery store tours and things like that. Would you do it for free? I say do everything for free when you were trying to market yourself unless there's a good reason to charge. So the reason I say do it for free is because people are already paying you with their time and their attention, right? If I show up to your grocery store tour, I am giving you that hour. That is extremely valuable. Oh my goodness, online, we're lucky if somebody looks at our email for five seconds. So for someone to give you their time like that, so valuable, I say you're gonna get more people there if you offer it for free than if you charge. And that just adds a layer of complexity to something like that. What are you gonna charge anyway, 10 bucks? You know. So um, generally, yes, do it for free. However, if you are doing something like through a yoga studio and they always charge for a workshop, they're gonna to wanna to charge for yours too, just cause that fits into how they run their business. In that case, fine. Then they charge whatever they normally charge. Leave it at that. All right, we talked about the local payable, we talked about the schools. What about this? In your area, I guarantee there's something like this going on at some point during the year. Isn't there some kind of fair, something where there are tables set up, maybe there are rides and games, maybe, maybe not. I know we had an Oktoberfest in my town uh, in 2023. We also usually have a summer fest. And I feel like there's something in the spring too. And I live in a small village and we have like those three events right there where small businesses can get a table 
And so if you're selling something, you can sell something for health coaches, you may or may not have a product. You might, if you do something like essential oils, or, you know, you might have a product that you want to have at the table, but you could do something like making energy balls, um, doing circle of life, circle of life assessments. Again, it's mostly about talking to people. So anything that can help you strike up a conversation with people as they walk by your table and food is a very, very, very good way to do that. So think about hosting a table at your local fairs. Health coaches talk a lot about going to health fairs, which can be a decent way to connect with partners, find other businesses, right? Because everyone who is there is part of the health and wellness world. But when you host a table at your local fair, well, now like your kid's uh, friend's mom or whatever, you know, other people that you just know, or somebody that you always see at the gym or somebody that you always see at the coffee shop is going to walk by and you're going to say hello. And then they're going to be like, Oh, what are you doing? And then you're going to say, Oh, you know, I'm a health coach. Would you like an energy ball? And they're going to say what's in it. And then you're going to start telling them about it. Boom. You're off and running and having a conversation. That's organic marketing. You know, like when you're not trying that hard, you're just talking to people. <laughs> okay. Here's another idea. Um, and I'm not sure if every area has something like this, but in many areas, you're going to find that there are classes being run through some type of community center, um, some type of art center, some type of something center where you can volunteer to teach a class. And sometimes they will, you, it will be paid. Like when I lived in Boston, I did a couple of classes through the local center. Um, you can do cooking classes. They often have a kitchen, right? That you can use. You can do cooking classes. You can teach about any topic that you want. Um, it can be a lot of fun. You're definitely going to meet people in your community. And it's the kind of thing they usually will book you again and again and again. One of our HP members, Susie, was doing something like this in her local area. So she had a class that she was teaching and she would do it in like the, the winter semester and then the spring semester and the summer semester, et cetera, and get paid to boot. Isn't that a great thing? Kathy said the recreation center. Yes, it might be through the rec center in your town. Exactly. So wherever they're already holding classes, guess what? They need people to teach the classes. That can be you. And again, if you're like, why me? I'm no expert. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a chef. Yeah, well, they're pulling from the local community. They're psyched that somebody wants to teach this class. You know, they make money. It's a win-win for everybody. The worst thing that happens is they say, no, thank you. That's it. Or they say yes, and then nobody actually signs up for the class and they cancel it. So what? Worth a shot. And then you can say that this is a place that you have taught. This is another great way to build confidence. Ellen is mentioning hospital-based community programs, usually large conglomerate hospitals. Okay, that might be another option. I actually don't know much about that, but I like that suggestion, Ellen. Thank you. And lastly, here's one for you. If, uh, if you're like me, you love to eat, and you always check out the restaurants in your local area. There are a lot of opportunities to partner with restaurants. You know, you could actually hold an event there. Like if they're closed on Mondays, maybe on Mondays, you could actually host a workshop in their space. Again, they have a kitchen, they have seating, you know, they have a space, use it. But you can also intertwine your services with what a restaurant offers, um, especially if they have any leaning towards health. So it doesn't have to be a strict health food restaurant, but if they do have that gluten-free menu or those vegan options or whatever, then they know that people are coming to their establishment are interested in these things. They might say, yeah, we'd love to host a workshop about going gluten-free or eating healthy as a vegan or whatever. I also know when I was um, a student at IIN, one of the friends that I made in my class, her name was Laura, she actually had her own restaurant. And what she decided to do was create a healthy, a healthier menu. 
and they printed it on like a slip of paper and they put it inside the regular menu just to test it out. So she actually like created three or four different menu items that were a little more health focused than the rest of the menu. And, uh, and they started actually doing a really good business with those. So if you had an in with a restaurant, you know the chef, I mean, you could even go so far as to influence their menu. Or at the very least, what if you added like a healthy ordering guide or something that they stick into their menu or they put it on a little card at the table that's like, here are, you know, like the, you'll always say like the heart friendly options, or like if you're uh, big into keto or low carb or whatever, here are the low carb options on the menu, like a guide for people who are in the restaurant to make good choices based on the current menu. And then of course your name is at the bottom, <laughs> your email, your URL, your phone number is at the bottom. You know, this is a way for a restaurant to add value and to sell more right? Because I always tell people, okay, you go into a restaurant, look for the protein and look for a vegetable on the menu. And I usually end up ordering like the most expensive steak because that's like the cleanest protein that I can find. And then like a $6 side of broccoli <laughs> to make the meal that I actually want to eat. So, you know, they are going to benefit because the people coming to their restaurant are like, oh, I can eat healthy here. I'm going to come here more often. That's how you pitch it. Ellen saying, can you suggest local TV programming? How do you get on as a health reporter part of the show? Um, I don't, I don't know is my answer to that, Ellen. I've done it. I've done it when I had hired someone for PR and got me onto a spot like that. But if you know people, or if you just are a squeaky wheel, I bet you can get yourself on local TV too. I don't have a really good answer for you there. And I also know it's going to vary from place to place, right? If you're in a big city, it's going to be harder than if you're in a, a small town and there's like two people who work at the, the local TV station. So there you have it, 10 ways. And I want to say we even said more than 10 ways, but 10 ways to engage with your local area, whether you live in the middle of a city or in a rural area, there are businesses everywhere. There are schools everywhere. There are restaurants and churches everywhere. Even if you're in a, like a less populated town, you can feel confident because then you are a big fish in a small pond. Make that work to your advantage. And if you start planning now, like I said, you can have events set up throughout 2024. So everybody in your area knows exactly who you are and what you offer. Additionally, a lot of these ideas that we've talked about today they can work online. Workshops, lunch and learns, all of those can be held virtually. Book clubs can be virtual. You can write a column for an online publication of any kind. So take these ideas and translate them to the online space. You can be very busy marketing yourself all year long and we didn't even touch email, social media, funnels, any of that techie stuff. This episode is brought to you by That Clean Life, which is an awesome resource for health coaches to create recipe books and help clients with meal planning on any type of diet. You are going to love it. I have always loved using That Clean Life. And for a limited time, I have a discount to share. You'll get 20% off your first four months when you join at healthcoachpower.com TCL. And I will see you all next week. Take care, everyone.